If we have any uh, elected officials of any sort here, please make me aware because we want to thank you for taking your time to come out and support the work we're doing. Might be a little soft. All right, without but, uh, further ado, two, two awesome hours. friends of mine. Why not? Now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We the people, you, me, all of us, we are the stewards of the U.S. Constitution and remain ultimately responsible for its continued existence and its faithful interpretation. And I want to thank you all for being here today to celebrate this with us. And God bless you and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. At today's event, we have brought together a diverse group of some of the best experts on the topic of our Second Amendment. Now get this number. We have 325 million rest residents estimated. We have 400 million privately owned firearms across this nation. <laughs> By responsibly armed citizens, again, this statistic came from CNN. So they lie for a living, and again, I think these are estimated and rookie numbers that we can definitely pump up, right? Just saying. To him. I need to thank uh, MMP Guns over here. They're a platinum sponsor. They put a lot together to, to be able to, for us to be able to do this for you. I believe that Jesus would support the Second Amendment. And I actually believe it's biblical, and I want to share with you why that is. Because if you read some of the New Testament, and if you don't, that's fine, but find a Bible, you can read this. Jesus actually asked his disciples to sell their cloak and get a sword if they did not have one. Here's why he did that. He knew there was a presence of evil. He knew that evil needed to be resisted. It's the same reason why we have this Second Amendment. It's actually to resist the potential tyrannical leadership and evil that exists in the world. Jesus has always talked about as being a lamb, but most of us forget that Jesus is also a lion. Right? Can we say that? Amen? So there is a balance to be struck between these two things. My pastor says it a lot, so if he, you know, if he hears us, I'm not going to be pastor. But you know what? We need to be tough, and we need to still be tender. We need to be a lion, and we still need to be a lamb. So we got a whole bunch of lions out here today, and that's great. But you guys, there's a balance to all of this. We need to find the middle, not the political middle, but we need to find the balance of being righteous, God-fearing people who are tender as a lamb. But you guys, we are teaching kids to love God, to love their family, and love their country. And that's what this event is all about. And I'm so grateful to be part of this event. So have a wonderful rest of your event. God bless. Start now. Don't give the government a reason to come to your front door. The AZCDL is over there. They help write good laws so that we are not redefined as criminals. Because we're not. Thanks for being here. When you have somebody like a Beto O'Rourke that goes on national TV and says, hell yeah, we're going to take their AR-15s, right? When you have a Joe Biden who constantly talks about a so-called assault weapons ban. And then when you have Katie Hobbs that's running around here, like, you know, y'all know what's going on. 
And so either they don't know or they don't care about what the people are actually saying and doing. Like the people here today and everyday Americans who are deciding that 2A rights are important. And not only are they important, they're important at a local level. The difference between losing the Second Amendment and keeping the Second Amendment, believe it or not, is the Republican Party. So when you decided not to vote for a Republican because you didn't like something, if we lose the House and the Senate over here in 24, start buying 10 round magazines. Start burying your guns in your backyards. You don't believe me? The Democrat introduced 10 anti-gun bills this year alone. Think about it. Can you imagine if they have the governor's office and both chambers? What do you think is going to happen to your guns? What do you think is going to happen to our guns? Gone. So before you start thinking about bashing a Republican, think about that in 24. My line, I would say, about two years ago was, pretty lackadaisy, you know, I was like, well, I love the Second Amendment, this is great, I'm teaching. I didn't really dive too much deeper into it until 2020, and then that's when I realized that we needed to act. And I realized that my line backed up way tighter than a lot of people. I have nothing's crossing. And what I mean by that is I don't like being played in these gun bills. They're, they're very... Uh, they're manipulative. George Neme from MAAP Real Talk Show. MAAP Real Talk Show. He's always in the chamber. You will see him with his camber, camera in chambers recording for us in real time what's going on with our elected officials. It's really awesome. Yeah, yeah you want to see a drop? We also have Ray Michaels Is of grassroots50.com. He's running around out here somewhere. And George Ortiz of the Chips and Salsa Show. All right, if there's any more, please make me aware so that I can thank you for being here. We have to change the public view of gun ownership. If you look at TV, all you see is negatives. The CDC removed all of its defensive handgun information and statistics off their website because it doesn't follow and portray what they want us to know. So we need to start countering the negative news stories with positive news stories online, however you can. Number one, if you haven't taken a, a class with your firearm, you're delinquent. I get it. I'm a member of the unorganized militia as well. But you're carrying a carbine here today and you have not gone under instruction with it in the last year and gotten better with your skills and passed an actual objective qualitative qualification that you know you can shoot with that thing then it's a whoopee and you should get rid of your whoopee and replace it with an actual defensive tool and number two you be the force for good in your world you be the force for kindness in your world you be the force that everyone looks to when everything goes wrong in any given way because you love them no matter what they believe about anything else. And that's how I think you make an individual difference for the Second Amendment. God bless you guys. Have a great day. This has not been a decision come easily, but I am seriously making it. I love protecting it on a local level, but I am seriously considering making a run at the U.S. Senate so I can go to Washington and protect these rights for you. So keep out your eye on social media. Look out for a possible announcement because we're going to take this fight and we're going to restore law and order and the Constitution to Washington, D.C. 30 round magazines that are standard. We went to 15 round magazines in the 90s and then 10 round magazines in 2018. And they're talking about reducing it again, going after features. It never stops. The fight will never go away. So what we need is what I tell people, no one party. No one race, no one gender, no one sexual orientation is going to win this fight. If you think it is, you're making a mistake. This is a mistake that the NRA made and a lot of the Second Amendment advocates out there made. They dismiss people of color. They dismiss anybody that wasn't a male, white, Christian dude, and what you did was get canceled. And that's messed up. But 
This is what you can do. You can support others. It is time for you to take a step back and push women forward. That's why I promote DC Project and women from the DC Project. I can't read one word up here. They're not going to stop at guns. You know, you know they basically have de facto gun registries. That's what they want to do. They want to know who's got guns. They want to know what kind of guns you have. They want to go after the ammunition manufacturers. They're going after every accoutrement, including the, the brace, the gun brace. They can't define an assault weapon, but somehow they want to ban assault weapons. Well, I've really had it in Washington, D.C. It's the most corrupt place I've ever seen on the planet. And I'm trying to understand why it's okay for us to transfer your tax dollars to Ukraine so they can be weaponized, but they want to take away the weapons and guns of American citizens. It's incumbent upon each and every single one of us, every single day, to stand in the gap between tyranny and freedom. It's between me and you. If we're going to save this country, if we're going to save Arizona, each and every single one of us, every day, has to stand in between the gap between freedom and tyranny. We're going to save this state. We're going to save Arizona. We're going to save this country and send the elitists back to the depths of hell where they're from. Thank you guys and God bless you. Another thing we need to do is we need to stop with the infighting. I'm about to hurt some feelings. So, <laughs> the feelings I'm going to hurt. Look, everybody need to stop the whole, oh, you're running a 1911. Oh, you're running an AK. Oh, you got my Emerald Grand. I don't care. Some people walk around here with kit from Amazon. Eh. Some people walk around here with some cry, some good stuff. I don't care if you're running a Poverty Pony or a Gucci gun. You still need to get involved. I don't care because guess what? There's people in these buildings behind us that won't give us the choice. I want to use this time to pray over all of you guys. So I'm going to end with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for being here, Lord, for being with us today, for protecting us. Lord, I thank you for this avenue that you've been able to allow me to share the message of what you've done in my life. The story, Lord, that is about you and you alone and the empowerment that you give, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you protect these men and women who are here because they want to protect and defend others. Because you've given us this right to defend ourselves and to protect those who, do, whether they know it or not, to be able to protect them in that situation. Lord, thank you. Lord, I pray for all ailments, Lord, anything that's happening right now, Lord, in these people's lives, I pray that you lift it and release it from them, and that you, Lord, at the end of the day, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Lord. I pray, Lord, for your protection as they go home. Thank you for bringing them here safely, Lord, and I, pray, I, I ask for protection going home, Lord. And Lord, at the end of the day, Lord, I pray that all of us here, Lord, know where our true power comes from, and that is through you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you.